For a small word that only takes a second to say, it can have a big and sometimes lasting effect. Sorry can reassure, please, comfort, placate, and even impress. It can also infuriate, worry, disempower, and devalue. Fortunately, there is a way that we can almost guarantee that sorry will work properly. And it's all about two vital steps that are missing from sorries that don't work. Here's how the two extra steps sound in action. Paul, what the heck happened to my agenda item? David, you sound really annoyed that I've dropped your idea off the board agenda. Too right. I wanted the issue resolved today. So you're especially annoyed because you had hoped to be able to put this thing to bed before it went any further? Exactly. I get it. And I'm sorry I've annoyed you. So what was going on there? Well, before apologising, I set myself two additional objectives. One, to truly understand what I was apologising for. And two, to make sure that David knew that I really understood. And I made those two things happen by looking out for the feeling that I had caused and what it was about, and then playing it back to him, to check if my assumptions were right. Doing this made a few things happen behind the scenes. Firstly, David knew that the sorry was meant. And I gave myself something important to do intellectually, as a replacement for making myself feel small with an instant, self-protecting apology. By empathising, I remained his equal, and therefore more useful to him as someone who could fix any damage caused. So... To make your sorries meaningful and of practical use, make sure you know exactly what you're apologising for before you apologise. That way, they'll know you're serious and you'll be in a better position mentally to clear up the issue.